Looking to the north, northeast, across the Bear Creek Valley, you see the old western cascades formed by volcanoes some 45 million years ago. If you look across the valley, about halfway down the slope of the western cascades, you see a layer of rock cliffs. That's the Payne Cliff Formation. Well, I was introduced to the Greenway by my friend Anita here, and um, I'm fairly new to it, and then I introduced my husband to it, and we love it. We um, have been coming actually twice a week uh, this whole fall, and uh, meet some interesting people along the way, and we love how clean it is and refreshing, and it's, it's a getaway. You know, I live in Talent, so this is like down the street from me, and it's convenient because I feel like I'm in nature, I'm away from community, but I'm still close by. I don't have to drive too far, just down the street, and I'm enjoying a creek and beautiful trees and fall colors and um, fresh air, so I love it. These are robins sitting in the tree taking the morning sun. You often see them in groups, particularly in the fall and the winter after nesting season. They, they love to perch up high where they can see what's going on. Here's a wetland or a marsh. There's several along the Greenway Trail. This one's full of cattails. Cattail is that uh, fuzzy brown mass. That's the, the female flower. The male flower is a soft yellow cluster at the tip that you'd see in the spring. Indians made good use of the cattail fluff, which is very absorbent. They used it for patting their cradles, for patting their moccasins, for dressing wounds, sort of a, an early huggies. The pollen can be used for making bread. Young shoots can be eaten raw or cooked. The starchy roots are, are also edible and can be mashed, boiled, or dried and ground into flour. I use the Greenway for almost daily training for marathons and triathlons and, and sometimes just commuting to and from Medford. And uh, it's a great all-purpose training and uh, traffic area. These are ring-necked ducks. They're very common at Newbury Park, particularly in the ponds. You rarely see them in a stream, but they love the quiet water of the old gravel ponds. And they're usually in quite large groups. They're diving ducks, and they catch most of their food underneath the surface. These ponds you see here were developed in the process of extracting rock and making gravel for construction projects like Highway 99 and I-5. They've become a valuable wetland habitat. This is a great place to see ducks and geese. Here we have two Canada geese standing. There's a widgeon in front of a hooded merganser female. She's the one who's fluffing her feathers. Now she's running across the water. She's being chased by a pie-billed grebe. They're both diving birds. They catch their prey underground, and the grebe is obviously trying to get the merganser out of its territory. Merganser's there behind the widgeon now, just moved behind the rock, it keeps going. And we'll see the pie-billed grebe there. He has just popped up behind. He's clearly trying to get that merganser away from the food that he wants to catch for himself. It's convenient, it's very convenient, and it's very beautiful. And the wildlife is exceptional. You know, and we pick it, and it's, it's very nice, even when it's cold and rainy. It's, it's very nice. We, we always take the same walk, we always sit on the same bench. Uh, it's just a very restful place, and we really appreciate its existence and enjoy it a lot. As you approach the bridge from Lynn Newbury Park, just before you cross the creek, if you look to the left, you'll see a pear orchard. This is uh, Harry and David's orchard, and it grows camise pears, 
uh, Royal Riviera is the variety. You'll notice that the trees are, are pruned to a uniform uh, ten and a half feet in, uh, in height. Each acre produces about uh, 15 to 17 tons per acre. And irrigation is provided by creek rights, water rights, and uh, talent irrigation district. Uh, you'll also notice on the ground there, there are some, uh, some orchard heaters known as uh, return stacks there to protect the orchard in the event of a frost. Off in the distance above the tops of the, of the pear trees, uh, you see a windbreak of, of poplars. Every few years, Bear Creek floods, mostly during December and January. Usually we have a, a good snowpack in the mountains and it rains and warms up and a combination of snow melt and rain overwhelms the drainage system. Big floods in 1955, 64, 74, most recently in 1997. That's the flood that took out the old boxcar bridge that was here and floated sections of the trail right off the path. FEMA replaced the old bridge with this precast one we see now today. This one's longer, uh, more substantial, and got higher and heavier abutments, so it should survive in the future. Looking upstream, you'll see a rocky area, a shallow area in the creek. That used to be an old ford that was used before there was a bridge at this site. I'm a baker at New Sammy's Cowboy Bistro, and I use the bike path to ride back and forth to work. Beautiful summer day, good exercise. Here's a merlin, which is a small falcon that comes into the valley in the winter. It breeds in eastern Oregon, but it comes here for the milder winters and is a common hunter found along the greenway. It'll catch small birds and small mammals. 